Hey Steph, how's it going? It's Yoni here. Uh, just had a look at your reference and uh, just wanted to point out a few things, you know, give you maybe some feedback, you know, I'm not sure if it'll help that much because you've got kind of like quite a load of good lines there, which are really, really, really cool. I think the second one's from London Boulevard, but I'm not entirely sure, but it's definitely Ray Winston. Um, the first piece when it's coming in, uh, I think you just need a bit more business for your first clip of audio. Because the thing that happens is that all the acting on all three of your shots is really contained just in the face area. And the stuff that's happening on the body, not that there's got to be things that have to be happening all the time, but it would be good to take an advantage to put some more business in. In your first one, you had a shot where, you know, you were actually, you know, just holding the hat pulling it down that's something that you can do but if you were going to do that currently in your shot you do it like this and the hand is actually covering the face if you're actually lift it up and move it with the other hand you've still got the face clear and that staging is just going to be a little bit better it's the same as when he leans down on the desk there's a difference between him leaning kind of like fist down or actually a bit more relaxed down and those types of things you can do so he's, uh, when he comes in and he's kind of like so what we doing you know using things like the hands to actually push together, you know, and saying, so what are we doing? And maybe this is crime, leans back a little bit and says, oh, right, crime, you know, and just even like little things like what I'm doing with my hands right now will help bring that a little bit more to life. I think one of the things that you should maybe try and do is maybe do one or two passes about your shot but not with the dialogue straight away having the dialogue in mind for the beats and everything else but trying to get like uh, well, what the emotional states that the character's going for is he surprised that people are saying that it's crime or is it like oh crime yeah same old thing why am I surprised that we're not doing anything good it's kind of like trying to get that mental thing you know, of what's the thought process that the character's going a bit more visible, visible but not just in the face of Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, all of the other facial expressions you could do, but actually do it in the body as well, the same way as, you know, stuff that we've been posing and everything else like that. Really try and sell that emotion, but in the pose, and then when you could throw all of the dialogue back on top and the facial features, that's just going to make it a bit sweeter. I think there's some good moments in clip one, you know. I think the second take that you did is kind of like the strongest because there's a little bit of business going there with the hat. You've also got that lean back into the desk that works really good. But for facial expressions, you know, I really like the ones that you've got at the end of your um, fourth shot because you look just a little bit more, yeah crime, you know, and that little part with the mouth that you're doing around, you know, 891 frames, that part's really sweet there. Uh, the uh, second one, um, for some reason with this piece of dialogue, something that would be really funny is that if you actually made the rig of Stewie to be midget size, but really, really, really tiny, so that line of, I don't like the way you talk down at me, you know, he's actually delivering it up instead of down, so it's like, I don't like the way that you talk down at me, you know, because he is shorter, and that would make it really, 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 really funny. Um, the prop in the hand, the knife, it doesn't seem as menacing as I think it, uh, you know, it could be sometimes, you know, it's, I think that, you know, it's the thing I think that's really taking it is that he's holding it like that, and really you hold the knife like that. You know, if somebody threatens you, you threaten them properly to an extent. So it's one of those things that, you know, poking the knife towards the person is always going to be much more threatening than just showing it, you know, even in a weird, cool, stylized way. At least that's my opinion. And um, I like the way that, you know, there's small little details. Businessman, I think that one of those things that you could do is, again, playing with the idea of the businessman. It's like, look, I'm not a crook. I am a businessman, you know, it's that type of thing of showing, you know, respect, but not in the kind of like almost, you know, greaser, you know, 1950s, 1960s kind of like biker gang style. I don't think that that gesture actually sells that idea of, you know, that respectability. It could even be something like a brush on the shoulders or something very subtle. I think that that idea of, you know, businessman has to be kind of like very kind of like subtly sold there rather than trying to be as aggressive it's almost like if you started this shot off 
as him being aggressive, you know, and then kind of like cooling down. I think that would give it a bit more of a nice touch. And I think that just that idea of, I don't like the way you're talking down to me, you know, and always kind of like looking up, that will give you a much, much, much stronger thing. It's things to play with, really. You know, that'll help the character just sell a little better. And the last one that you've got, um, I really like, you know, the way that, you know, when you do it in uh, the last set of dialogue in a, um, it's pretty much a general show, you know, because you can see her pretty much kneeling down and coming up onto the bed. That's just got much more dynamism than just doing it as a medium shot. Good that you can have a look at the emotion, but I think that, you know, that body language, you know, that you've got rolling in your first take is really, really, really strong. And I really wouldn't change that too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the last one's kind of like, it's really strong. I'd take, you know, the posing that you've got there. And it's just one of those things of, you know, again, you know, uh, you can keep still to an extent, but I think there's always little pieces of business that you can actually add to your actual piece. And that's, you know, just a simple, you know, shift in the pose from one end to another to show if that person's much more worried or much more resolved at certain points. So I think that it doesn't have to be completely cliched. But again, I think that you can push a lot more stuff into this if you do like a second pass in your acting, your reference. But you're doing great. So choose the best three shots that you've got and send those over, you know, because I'm pretty sure that your mentor is going to give you loads and loads and loads of notes if you hand in like seven versions of all the clips. Be very directorial in the reference that you give just because I think that it's one of those things that, you know, it's more about having not necessarily a clear idea at the beginning, but at least always show what you think is the strongest idea because then they can always pull you into different directions, you know, because you're always going to have different ways that you could deliver the line different ways that you could deliver, you know, the, spe uh, the speech, whether you're looking up, looking down, all those changes. Make a decision on one and always think about what's the strongest thing that you see because that's your sensibility very much rather than getting your mentor later off to push you in a direction that you might not be happy with. Okay, so real good work and yeah, I'm looking forward to see this in blocking next week. Have a good time. See you. Bye.